I need to make a mounting bracket, I mark something up very carefully, and then I use a, a, a drill press, and uh, the hole never, never ends up where the two light cross lines <laughs> are. Um, it's, I don't know what it is. I, I've never had any training in, in uh, mechanical um, uh, workshop practice, and I guess I'm just not skilled enough. Um, using wrap wrap, though, I can, I can define a part and, uh, and build it. This, for instance, has got a particular gap between the two mounting holes to mount a micro switch. I've got one right here. Um, this clamps onto a, um, a piece of rod. Uh, to actually make one of these out of a bit of wood or out of a bit of metal would be an impossible task for me personally uh, because I just don't have those skills. Um, but I just have to print it and suddenly there it is ready for me to, to use. So that is an immensely big thing for me to be able to make mechanical parts uh, on screen, give it to the printer, bang one out. Um, also, I'm planning to be using my rep wrap for um, uh, printing more upgraded parts uh, for the printer itself. I've already uh, produced some little extra bits <coughs> and I think I may have started uh, an endless cycle of improving it, printing out something else that will make it work better and fitting that and then continuing that cycle. Um, what have other people used it for? Uh, it's traditional when you've got a machine working to use it to produce a mini mug um, because if it comes out right then you can fill it up with some strong drink and toast your new machine <laughs> and if it doesn't work it will leak and you wouldn't want to do that. Um, one of our, our group um, reports that he made the traditional mini mug and he was looking at it and he said to himself that looks very much like the missing foot on the end of the domestic ironing board. Um, I think it had been missing for a year and two years. So he took the dimensions, um, figured out what, just how to scale it up, and printed out a pair of feet which fitted on the bottom of the ironing board and um, uh, job done. Now you just wouldn't think of producing feet for your ironing board unless you've got the facility to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. um, what sort of plastic does it use? Uh, yeah, uh, the kind of plastic is called PLA, and that stands for polylactic acid. It's not plastic that comes from cracking uh, oil molecules. It comes from corn. Corn? Yeah. Corn. Molecules <coughs> corn that... A lot of 3D, a lot of 3D, uh, people in the 3D printer world seem to use a ABS. I mean, I would say, from what I've seen, most people use ABS. It seems to be the preset, sort of, the, the mm -hmm. wrap mm -hmm. in that world is seemingly concentrating on PLA, but I think we're slightly out of step, maybe because of our sort of the open source of ideals and maybe, It might be, I don't just know, that it's uh, said to be, to be environmentally better than, than uh, uh, oil-based molecules. Um, for what for to, an ironing board, wouldn't, wouldn't you want sort of rubbery feet? I would have thought so, but I can't, I, this but, is, this but, is but me better than that. repeating a story I heard. Maybe it's better it's than not missing, yeah, I don't know. Um, an angle poise lamp. Sorry, Lisa, go ahead. And it stops it wobbly. Ideally, hey, you're mm. inside with a flat side with an ang slight angle for the. I've definitely got your attention. I'm going to give you another example of something that, uh, that I made that was just so easy to do and, and so worthwhile. Um, uh, there's a, an angle poise lamp. Uh, it was produced by the RNIB, the Royal International Institute for the Blind, as a reading lamp for uh, partially sighted people. And uh, a lady got one of these things. Uh, the, it was like a standard angle poise stand and a particularly high intensity uh, light uh, head. Um, I think the mechanics of it had somehow been designed by a committee because <laughs> the, the, the thing at the top that shines the light 
it had an adjustment so it could go left or right. It had um, an axle so it could be tilted this way or that way. And it had the angle poise clip that allowed it to go up or down. Well, you don't really need that much adjustment on that angle poise because what happens is the moment you alter where the center of gravity is by turning it one way or, or tilting it, <coughs> then gravity takes over and the whole thing, well, this one always ended up looking like a swan with a broken neck, mm -hmm. pointing the light at the angle poise uh, stand. Absolutely useless. The person it had been issued to had passed it on to a friend of mine saying, I can't do anything with this. Is it any good to you? And that person had given it to me and said, I can't cope with this. Will you take it to the rubbish tip? Well, I, I would have taken it to the rubbish tip, but I'm in the habit of hanging on to anything that looks as if it could be hacked for at least a while, uh, several years. <laughs> Once I got a plastic printer, I realized what it needs is a new coupling at the top of the light. So I um, worked out that the angle poise would, uh, the, the angle poise would, would fit on there, and that, that would be just to give you a bit of action this way. It needed a solid coupling, not something that would yaw this way. And here, where it used to go left or right, um, I made this wide enough to actually stop any movement because uh, the, the thing couldn't move because this was sticking out in front of it. So just taking the dimensions and working that out was work of less than an hour, and probably less still. And here is the same thing fitted there doing its job. Now I've got a nice, high brightness, very obedient work, workspace light uh, on, a, on an angle poise arm. So that is an example, again, of a, just a very handy way of using my printer. But there's also the future. What will I use it for? Um, what can I do with it next? Uh, as an embedded software engineer myself, I've always been fascinated by mechanical things that move under software control. I can do the electronics and I can do the control software. I can't do mechanical things. I just never had the, the background for it. So uh, I would like to make something <coughs> mechanical that would work. If I had a, a lathe and a, uh, a vertical mill, maybe I could make the parts that I need but then I don't know how to use a lathe and a vertical mill anyway, so I would still be stuck. Um, what I've planned to do is make a gadget for the home, just for me, just to entertain me. It's not going to catch on for reasons that will become obvious. Um, what I want to do is take uh, an electric motor uh, and couple it up to the domestic curtains to open and close them uh, once a day. And how I plan to do it is uh, with two pulley wheels uh, above the curtain pole because it's one of those curtain poles that has uh, wooden rings and the curtains hang off the rings. Um, and one of these pulley wheels will couple to the motor. So I need a bracket that will clamp onto a, a circular pole and I need several of them. The motor itself is, is circular, it's not square as, as drawn here, it's got a, a circular thing. So we need a clamp, and uh, I've designed a clamp already. Um, this part here is, um, is it goes half the way around. Um, printing another one of these without the block on gives me the rest of it, and uh, I've got one here which uh, you can have a look at afterwards. The recess here takes an eight millimeter bolt and runs up to support uh, the pulley wheel. Um, well, there, there, is, there is the same clamp with pulley wheel in place. Um, did you print the pulley wheel too? <laughs> did I print the pulley wheel? Yeah. Yes, I did. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. And there are holes in the pulley wheel, uh, not for cooling, but to save plastic. Mm -hmm. Now, there we go. What I next need to do, and I haven't yet got this far, is to make a pulley wheel with gear teeth on it, a, a crown wheel. That's not an impossible thing to do with, uh, with red wrap. Uh, finally, that will mesh with a pinion wheel which I fixed to my motor um, so that when the, the geared motor runs, <coughs> the pulley turns slowly, the, 
strings with my curtains. You know. um, I can understand why you wouldn't want one of these in your house because uh, um, it's you wouldn't want all the wheels and strings showing. But in my case, uh, it's going to entertain me every time it works. It's going to infuriate me every time it doesn't work. Uh, well, I just made a note here. Um, it'll delight me when it's finished, and if it doesn't work, it's not yet finished. Um, a good helmet might be useful as well. Yes. Behind, if you want. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, that would be. That would be. That would be. No, possible. no, no. I, when your first upgrade, right. you need to connect it to the X11 system, yes, so you have an automation to open and close it for you when it wants to. <laughs> well, yeah. In the background, and it's not really part of this talk, is uh, the idea that um, it will be radio triggered, and uh, uh, I've got a server that runs all day in my house, and there'll be a, a task. Yeah. They will also look out for um, the changing seasons and the time of day that it needs. Well, so you just put a light sensor on, yeah. on, the, on the window. Put a light sensor on the window. Oh, a light sensor on the window is possible too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice when you go on holiday and have you know, your yeah. curtains drawn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, uh, it'll get there. I'm absolutely sure it will. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll manage. Well, they'll all shoot. the lights on at various times. Right, yeah. aren't you? Well, yes. Well, that's the X10 system. Yeah, there is. You, you can also you can ready get ready made uh, bits and bobs for a yeah, home automation yeah. system. Um, I, I'm just going to sum up now because that really more or less uh, um, uh, completes my talk. But I just go back to the uh, Trans Valley Rep Rep User Group. Uh, we are having another meeting at the end of the month when people are going to be bringing their ready built machines uh, to display and. Um, at that meeting, there will be another build group announced. So if my talk has inspired it, or just seeing the rep reps out there has inspired anybody to take a closer look, um, this meeting in Reading would be well worthwhile uh, spending some time at, because uh, there will be people there with experience and people ready to uh, give you advice. So that completes it. That's all I have to say. Questions and answers, yes, please. I'm done.